are all the tests that I have been doing on some 3D printed pieces. I've been trying different techniques of connecting the pieces together and this one right over here is my 11th try so we'll go through them all so that I can talk about the things that worked and didn't work and lessons learned from them. Okay, so let's get started. Here is the first test and the idea was to be able to create a box out of separate pieces that are able to interlock in some way or form. So the first idea was to use ball and sockets. So for example there are balls on this piece that would be able to be interlocked into the sockets on this piece. So for this example, this piece would be the side piece, and this piece was the front piece, and this one the top piece. So it would go sort of something like this. And one of the issues that I noticed is that the balls were always popping off of the pieces just whenever you would try to lift it out of the sockets. So this would always happen and no matter how I tried to really print it, like the quality wise, it would always end up happening. As you can see here, they're just totally gone. Here is the second try, and with this try I experimented with um, rotating the part, so seeing if the grain, so-called grain of the extruded plastic had any effect on if the balls were popped off or not. And one of the things that I noticed was with this piece, the diameter of the sockets actually weren't always the same. And that was because of some warping that was going on. So that was no good. Um, and also supports were used, like internal supports so that hopefully there would be no warping. So then after that I tried my own supports and this definitely did not work like this is a pretty uh, bad idea it like using your own supports you have to be really sure that the slicer is going to see them as actual pieces and print them out but also make sure that they're flimsy yet strong enough to hold up the thing, and in this case it was too strong, but anything smaller, well, I think I'd have to spend a lot more time in the settings, and I don't think it would have had a big effect in the end. So then, there was the next test, and the next test was just a simple little test that I made up in Inventor with uh, four parts here. And this is sliders, so basically there's an open part and then there's this rail part. And so they would stick together like this and then slide together. I figured this would probably be a good way to go because, well, it's pretty strong and you don't get that much of an ugly space in between. So I figured out what settings or what values to use, like the rectangle width and opening width to use, and then I printed out the three pieces, this time with rails. Although it does look like it works, um, there were some issues with it. Let's see if the camera, there we go. So the first issue is that first of all it's not very strong. <laughs> and the reason why is because of the overhang. So for example, when this piece is being printed, then it's printing it layer by layer, but then when it hits this, even if there are supports, you'll have some like uh, rigids or leftovers from it, and those really interfere with the sliding ability of the pieces. Not only that, but also there was one piece here where the, yeah, there it is. That's sort of just. Uh, wasn't very strong at all, just cracked off. Now, another thing that was changed from the previous uh, test to this one was that in Skyenforge, 
or however it is pronounced, I changed the extrusion so instead of being 90 degrees, it's now 45 degrees, and this leaves it with an interesting diagonal look, and also not printing with a raft anymore, so that's what gives it the shine from the capped on tape printing directly onto the build plate. I also experimented with obviously printing the whole rectangle or the whole box out. <laughs> but one of the things with this is that, of course, um, it takes a longer time, I find, and you really have to make sure your geometry is good and everything. In my design, I made a big fault where there were overhangs and the supports didn't work for some reason, so I just cancelled the print before it could waste more filament. But this design here would probably be fun to try again sometime on something different because it still didn't really solve the problem. Okay, on to the next try. And this one was actually kind of similar. Um, so what I did first was, uh, of course, print out another test. And this time, instead of it being rectangles, it was uh, rectangles with fillets on it, so sort of rounded. And this way it could slide in pretty easily. This one wasn't the best matching one. I think maybe this one was. But you see what I mean. And so I tried that for these pieces, and uh, <laughs> it just totally did not work. Uh, let's see here. So it slides in nicely, but there's absolutely no snap to it at all. And so that made me think a little bit. The ball and socket snapped really nicely. So nicely, in fact, that they popped off. And the uh, rails, or the sliders, slide pretty nicely, except that they don't stick together. So what I did was I took the cross section of the ball and socket and just extruded that so that it could be a slider. That's essentially just um, with the right, <laughs> right clippiness, I guess, or the right uh, uh, angles to make it fit well. So here is an example of the test that I ran so that it, we could see um, how well it snaps on and everything. So I tried this with these pieces again, <laughs> and to my surprise, it actually didn't work. <laughs> so let's see here. So this one goes in like this, right? And you can sort of hear it crackling along. And uh, yeah, that was basically the whole problem. Like, it's sort of sliding in, but it doesn't do the snap that the same test pieces had. So what I thought was, oh, maybe the extrusion is just too long. So I figured might as well try something like this, where there's spaces in between and everything like that. And this is basically how it does, it sort of snaps in but doesn't, and as it turns out, the snappiness of it all sort of depends on the flexibility of the rail piece, so it has to be thin enough for it to sort of flex right over this. I don't know if you could see it in that little video clip there, but that's essentially what's happening. So it sort of goes like this. Boom. And even if I tried something really thin like this, uh, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's just not flexible enough because, well, first of all it was printed up and down, so it made it a bit more stronger, and basically it just doesn't really snap in, so... So I sort of gave up on that plan. 